Hi everyone, we now learn about tree diagrams for probability. And in this tutorial, we're going to focus on learning how to draw or construct a tree diagram, as well as how to list all of the possible outcomes of an experiment. And finally, we'll see how to calculate the probability of each of those possible outcomes. For that, I'm going to use the exercise that you see here, in which we're told that a box contains 10 paper slips, four are blue, and six are red. We are then told two paper slips are taken with replacement from the box, and we're asked to construct a tree diagram to show all of the possible outcomes of the experiment, and we're asked to find the probability of each of those possible outcomes. As you can see on the right hand side here, I've illustrated this experiment. So we have a box in which there are 10 paper slips, and four of them are blue, and six of them are red. And so to picture the experiment that's being described here, let me highlight a couple of very important words in this question. Those are with replacement. In probability, when we read with replacement, it gives us some information about how we're going to pick the two paper slips from this box. And here's the idea. Imagine not being able to see what's inside the box and taking one paper slip. You look at its color, either blue or red, and then put it back inside the box. Once that's done, you then pick the second paper slip, which again will either be blue or red. Now the words with replacement are what tell us that we put the first paper slip back inside the box before picking the second one. And it's very important to make a note of that as it will affect the actual probabilities. That being said, let's see how to construct a tree diagram for this experiment. Starting from any random point right here, we need to illustrate the possible outcomes of the first paper slip we pick from this box. Since there are only blue and red slips, there are only two possible outcomes, either blue or red. And that's exactly what the tree diagram will show. Starting from this point, I can either get a blue slip, and in fact I write B here, as in blue, or we could get a red slip, and I'll write a capital R for red. And now, before even thinking about the second paper slip we pick from the box, we need to write the probability of each of these two possible outcomes for our first paper slip. Well, remember, there were 10 paper slips in total, and the number of blue paper slips was 4. Consequently, the probability of picking a blue slip would be 4 out of 10, or 0 0.4 and I write that probability along the side of the branch going from the starting point to the outcome B. In other words, I write 4 over 10 right there. For the other branch, the probability of picking a red paper slip, well, that's 6 out of 10 because there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 red paper slips. And so I write that along the branch, that's 6 out of 10. Notice here that if we add 4 over 10 to 6 over 10, it's equal to 10 over 10, which is equal to 1. And that should always be the case. Indeed, when adding the probabilities written along branches leaving a same point, the result has to add up to 1. That being said, let's extend our tree diagram for the second paper slip. And in fact, I could write a 1 here to indicate that these are the possible outcomes for the first slip we pick. Now, for the second paper slip, let's imagine for a second that the first one we took was blue. Well, for the second paper slip we take, there will still only be two possible outcomes, either blue or red. And so I extend my tree diagram like this. I draw two branches leaving the letter B, and what's more, we either get blue or red. Similarly, if the first paper slip we had picked was red, then for the second paper slip, we'd still have the same two possibilities. Indeed, it would either be blue or red again. So I write that here, blue or red. And now, just as we did for the first paper slip we took, we have to add probabilities along these branches. And this is where the two words with replacement become very important. Since after we took the first paper slip, we put it back inside the box, the probabilities of picking either blue or red won't be affected at all. And that's because there will still be 10 paper slips in total inside the box, and there will still be four blues and six reds. Consequently, the probability of picking a blue slip after having picked a blue slip for the first one will still be four out of 10. The probability of picking a red slip, well, it will still be six out of 10. And the same applies for these branches down here. Had we picked a red slip to begin with and then put it back inside the box, 
then the probability of picking a blue slip for the second one would be 4 out of 10, and the probability of picking a red slip would be 6 out of 10. And now that we've taken care of the second paper slip, we can say that we've drawn the tree diagram for this experiment. But a good habit to pick up when drawing tree diagrams is to write all of the possible outcomes on the right hand side here. And in fact, that's what was asked in the question here. We had to construct a tree diagram, which as such is what we've done here, but they also said to show all of the possible outcomes. And here's how to do that. Starting from the beginning of the tree diagram, that's this point here, we're going to walk down each of the four possible paths we see. Whilst doing so, we make a note of each of the outcomes we come across. The combination of those will make up the different outcomes of the experiment. Here's what I mean. Walking along the top branch here, we come across blue followed by another blue. And so that would be the outcome blue, blue, meaning a blue for the first slip and a blue for the second slip. Next, we'll come across blue followed by red. So that would be the outcome B, R as in blue for the first slip and red for the second one. We carry on, we have red followed by blue. So that's the outcome R, B. And finally, we have R followed by R, which is the outcome red followed by red. And in doing this, we've now listed all of the possible outcomes of this experiment. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box those. These are all of the possible outcomes of this experiment. And to convince yourself of that, imagine picking two paper slips with replacement from this box and try coming up with any other outcome than blue followed by blue, blue followed by red, red followed by blue, or red followed by red. And you'll quickly see that there is no other possible outcome. That being said, let's now learn how to calculate the probability of each of those possible outcomes. And I'll write those probabilities right next to each of these outcomes. So let's go ahead. The probability of picking a blue followed by a blue will be equal to the product of the probabilities that I come across as I walk through the tree diagram. So for blue followed by blue, those probabilities would be 4 over 10 times 4 over 10. And if I write that, that's 4 over 10 times 4 over 10. And that's equal to 16 over 100, which is equal to 0.16. Next, the probability of picking blue followed by red. Well, blue followed by red corresponds to the path blue followed by red. And the probabilities I come across are 4 over 10 and 6 over 10. And so I multiply those together and state that the probability of blue followed by red equals to 4 over 10 times 6 over 10. And that's equal to 4 times 6, which is 24 over 10 times 10, which is 100. And in decimal, that's equal to 0 0.24. I carry on and find the probability of picking red followed by blue, for which the path along the tree diagram would be red followed by blue. The probabilities we come across are therefore 6 over 10 and 4 over 10. And so the probability of red followed by blue is equal to 6 over 10 times 4 over 10. And that's equal to 6 times 4, 24, over 10 times 10, 100. And as a decimal, that's equal to 0 0.24. Finally, the probability of picking red followed by red, well, starting from here on the tree diagram, we go red followed by red, and the probabilities we come across are 6 over 10 and 6 over 10. And so the probability of picking red followed by red equals to 6 over 10 times 6 over 10, which equals to 6 times 6, 36 over 10 times 10, 100, which we can write as a decimal as 0 0.36. And we're done. We've now drawn or constructed a tree diagram showing all of the possible outcomes of the experiment, as well as their corresponding probabilities. And with this tree diagram, we can now answer questions about probabilities for this experiment. And in fact, for simple probabilities, we already have everything listed right in front of us. For instance, if we were asked what's the probability of picking two blue paper slips in a row, well, that would correspond to the outcome blue followed by blue, and the probability would therefore be 0 0.16. 
Or we could have been asked, what's the probability of not picking any blue slips at all? And that would correspond to the outcome, red followed by red, for which the probability is 0 0.36. But what if we were asked, what's the probability of picking exactly one blue slip? Well, in that case, we see that there are two outcomes that have exactly one blue paper slip in them. Blue followed by red, as well as red followed by blue. And both of those outcomes have the same probability, 0 0.24. But so which one do we choose, or do we have to choose? And we learn how to answer that type of question in the next tutorial, so do watch it now. For now though, you should now have a far better idea of how to construct a tree diagram, as well as how to list all the possible outcomes, and how to calculate the probability of each of those possible outcomes. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial.